Clean <laughs> in your mind. Do it. Let's All do right. It. <laughs> All right, Darren, what's your story? Oh, wow. That's, that's a broad question. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, so, yeah, born and raised Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, lived there 36 years. Came out to Southern California uh, about a year ago. Uh, I'm out here with uh, my kids and I. We live here in Palm Springs. So, it's a uh, very different place than where I grew up. So, I'm going to have to rep my uh, Pittsburgh swim and all the people on here that have been uh, part of that swim over the years. So uh, it's great to see some of you guys again. And uh, boy, my story, I started, uh, started um, into endurance sports 2008 running marathons. I was about uh, 270 pound uh, strong man, we'll call it doing a lot of heavy lifting type stuff. And I uh, just kind of came to that turning point. I wasn't really happy where I was at in my life. And, um, you know, just drinking way too much, smoking a pack a day, you know, I'm sitting up for my bench press and I'm like winded and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, this sucks. Um, so I started uh, running with a friend who was a marathon runner. And, you know, of course, she's like, bing, 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 jumping around. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, coming to the coming to the, uh, the track with her. But uh, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I started running and then I'm like, all right, so then I quit my drinking, quit my smoking, and then I'm, I'm running, and I'm just losing weight and feeling good, you know? And uh, within, like, two weeks, I think, like, the extreme side of me comes out. I'm like, I'm going to run a race. I'm going to sign up for a marathon, you know? And I'm like, never ran anything more than, like, the one mile in gym class, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so, like, three weeks later, I'm, like, sign up for a marathon after training for, like, I don't know, a month and a half. I look like I could pretty much eat the guy next to me <laughs> at the starting line, you know, because I'm like – What's up? Where's the breakfast? You know? <laughs> um, so that day, what it taught me that day was I ran my first marathon. It was like four hours, 20 some minutes. And I was up and over this mountain. It was like 96 degrees, central Pennsylvania, smoldering summer. And, um, you know, what it taught me that day, I was capable of doing something I didn't know was possible. Right. It's not that I didn't believe in myself, but after I completed that run, I was just like the next day, I'm like standing at the top of my steps, trying to walk down the steps. I'm like, Oh God, this is horrible. You know? <laughs> why on earth would anybody want to do this you know um but what i what i learned that day was like huh like i just did something that, like you know when you're growing up you hear people that run marathons you're like those people are nuts you know what i mean and uh, i was like what else can i do you know and i was like this is kind of fun i'm feeling good you know and um so i started kept kept running and ran a couple more marathons and uh about a year later uh may of 2009 i probably lost about 80 pounds and uh, felt great. And uh, my goal at that time was to qualify for Boston. So in Pittsburgh, 2009, qualified for Boston. And then I was kind of just like, all right, now what, you know, and uh, I started reading, started seeing a lot of stuff out there on um, ultra marathon running. And uh, so I'd sign up for a 50 mile race in Ohio. And then, I, and then a corresponding 100 mile race a couple of months later. But I, um, I ran that first 50 miler with a busted metatarsal in my right foot. Oh. And, uh, I, you know, I, my surgeon was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. But knowing you, you're going to do it. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's all good. You know, so I uh, did my did my first ultra marathon with a busted up foot. And uh, needless to say, that put me out for a while. Yeah. So um, I was lugging around one of those walking boots and I was like, oh, my God, now what am I going to do? You know, like I, I feel great. I'm in this perfect shape. And I'm like now what? And, um, I stumbled across the book like many of you have called swimming to Antarctica, uh, mm -hmm. by the, the famous Lynn Cox, uh, mentor and, and to us all. Um, but, uh, I read the chapters and, uh, just saw the one on the English channel and I was like, this is cool. I'm going to do open water swimming. I have never done open water swimming, but let's have a go at it. You know, Did and, you swim uh, at all? Uh, I grew up, I'm sorry, I grew up a pool swimmer. Yeah, okay. I guess I, should, I guess I should preface that. That's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I did not grow up a runner. Um, I grew up a pool swimmer. So yeah, my whole life and I swam two years at uh, Penn State. And um, but after that, that's when I kind of started getting getting into the gym and getting crazy. But uh, after that, I was approached by a good friend of mine that wanted to do something on her dad who had passed away from an open heart surgery. And um, being you know, phil philanthropy has been ingrained in my life from my grandparents since I was a kid. And, you know, I'm all, I'm my, and my parents, and I'm just trying to give back any way I could. And I'm like, hey, pay for me. I just blurted it out. I'm like, pay for me to go swim the English Channel, and we'll raise money uh, in honor of your dad for a specific charity. And she was like, okay, that sounds great. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it, you know. Um, 
again, like never swam anything before. So I'm like, you know, English Channel, that should be the first thing you go after, you know. Um, so anyway, long story short, we uh, actually the other day was my 10 year anniversary. So that was pretty cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and so I signed up, but it was humorous because I actually signed up if everybody can understand this, right? I, under, I signed up in October of 2009 for a July 2010 swim. So what, 10 months? <laughs> and I got a first slot. Could you imagine? Oh, wow. <laughs> Nowadays, everybody's like, oh God, I'm signing up for like 2032 and I'm gonna have to, you know, my, my kid's gonna be 18 by that time. You know? I'm like, yeah. wow, this sport has changed so mm -hmm. much, you know? But anyway, so uh, yeah, long story short, I, one of my favorite memories though, is I went out to a lake and it was, the water was like 58 degrees in this lake, my local lake where I always trained at. And I was trying to do this, uh, the six hour qualifier, you know, and I had my kayak out there. I had like my support crew all my food. And I'm like, all right, here we go. And it was like probably one of the first times I'd ever been in water that cold, you know? <clears throat> so I walk out into the lake and I'm standing there like this. And I'm like, I'm like, F, you know, I'm like, what the, I'm like, you kidding me? <laughs> so, so literally I'm out there for like 10 minutes and I turn around and I'm like, screw this. And I came back out, you know? So needless to say, I realized pretty quickly that I had to acclimate. Yeah. Cold. And uh, being luckily, it was coming into uh, January or, you know, November, December in Pittsburgh. So starting to get pretty cold. So it just became a daily routine where I was going out, submerging myself, cold showers. You guys know the drill. And um, yeah, I don't know, seven, eight months later, you know, I was able to went over and swam the channel. So it was a beautiful day. You know, can't complain. Um, uh, I came back. And then at that point, it was kind of like, all right, now what? Kind of at that point. And uh, we had raised a bunch of money for the hospital for the kids, and it was awesome and super excited about that and those people that I met and helped. And, and I was like, let's keep this going. And uh, I was speaking at a Rotary meeting. Crazy enough, I almost didn't go to because of work. And that's where I found my sponsor. Um, it's an absolute blessing in this sport. As many people know how expensive this sport is, um, I, I found a guy that was willing to basically – uh, underwrite uh, the remaining six of the Ocean Seven, and that's what I was wow. pitching to them. So it was truly a blessing. So every dollar that we brought in, you know, went to the kids, and he paid for everything. You know, wow. and it was just, you know, I still to this day I'm like, please pinch me, you know, yeah. because uh, some of those swims are not cheap, you know. Right. So uh, we continued to fundraise for the Children's Hospital, and then yeah, year over year, I knocked out Catalina was the next one. Uh, um, Molokai 2011, uh, Gibraltar 2012, um, I'm losing my mind here. What else? What was it? Oh, Suguru was 2012, and then um, uh, Cork Strait 2013, and then finalizing with my, my favorite, the uh, North Channel in 2013. So, August 2013, knocked out the Ocean Seven, and um, you know, it was just uh, just a wonderful experience to come from a landlocked area hot box like pittsburgh and you know be able to swim in the oceans around the world and more importantly why i do it is for the kids you know i don't i don't do this for myself you know i got better things to do with my time than swim with sharks and run 100 <laughs> mile foot races you know so right. um <clears throat> but now, but now having two kids it's to be the example for them and that's why i continue to do it yeah and uh you know, running honestly is just a it's just a cheaper endeavor. Um, yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy running. I love it a lot. Um, I love exploring these mountains out here. But um, there's definitely a few swims that uh, I I will go after at some point. Um, yeah. But that'll be at some point. So. Right. You mentioned um, the extreme side of yourself. Where did when did you first kind of discover that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You're going to go deep into the mind of a maniac if we start going down that rabbit hole. No, it's um, <clears throat> to me, to me, I always talk about when I speak, I talk about having a hero in your life. Everybody needs to have a hero. And to me, it, it was my grandmother. My grandmother passed away February 26, 1998. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. Um, that to me is the definition of legacy. That's what I strive for from not only my children, but even my potential grandchildren someday. And um, to me, it was, I got into, eh, you know, extreme was always there. I went through a rough period in my early 2000s. You know, I had some, some legal issues, some motorcycle going too fast, some um, few other things I'm not going to talk about right now. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a dark point a lot of us have gone through, right? And uh, to me, how I got out of that was being at the gym, um, you know, just, just working out like heavy. At that point, my first real, I would say it was extreme, was, was weightlifting. You know, I just, I I used to be benching now uh, 450 pounds, deadlifting six, 700 pounds. I mean, it was just like, 
you know, and that was after I was a college swimmer, you know, and that was before mm-hmm. my marathon career. So I, I, mm-hmm. I, ballooned, I ballooned like 70 pounds, you know, out of nowhere, just lifting and getting crazy. And, and I think that always helped me and to parlay that into the running thing because mm-hmm. why else would you, the first race you ever run is a marathon, especially being 260 pounds, you know? So to right. me, it was like, it was like, but once I started doing those things, it just, it just opened my eyes and it brought the side out of me that, uh, I was like, this is amazing. You know, like I, I'm so in love with like endurance at this point. Yeah. And, uh, and then after I banged up my foot and I was reading a book about like swim, her swimming with sharks and swimming yeah. with jellyfish and like in the middle of the night, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like, I could totally raise a bunch of money for charity doing this, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then we did the ocean, English channel and then the ocean seven. I mean, for some of you, if you've done some of the swims, I mean, you know, um, you know, to go out and, for example, like Molokai, I mean, to go out there and swim in the middle of that ocean with the sh- with, with what's out there. And we've all seen Rainey's video with the bull sharks or, or the uh, tiger shark circling or, you know, it's just, it's that extreme side of, uh, uh, of adventure that I love. So I'm yeah. just, I'm just constantly pushing myself and yeah. I don't know. Like to me, um, that's, that's just a hundred percent or nothing. That's the way I roll. So. Yeah. Yeah. You think just out of curiosity, do you think it's something that people are born with? It's kind of that endurance drive and that kind of risk taking, or do you think it's something people yeah. are born with? I, I think if we do if people that do what we do a hundred percent are risk takers, you have to be, there's no doubt, especially if you're doing open major open ocean swims, you gotta be a risk taker. Um, but a lot of people don't see it that way. You know, everybody's just kind of like, Hey, just get out there and get it done. It's the same philosophy I have. It's so funny. Like you, you meet a normal person, right? And they're like, well, how long does it take to swim the channel? Or, or, you know, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to drive a hundred miles, let alone run a hundred miles. You know, it's like, it's that philosophy, that mindset. That's like that tenacious mindset that, that it's like when people say to me, like, what have you learned over 13 years of doing this stuff? 12 years. I said, the number one thing I've learned in my life is that there's nothing out there that I can't do. If you decide to, and, yeah. And, I'm not, and believe me, I'm not like some egotistical person. I'm just literally like, I think you guys can tell, like, this is who I am. I mean, I just, I just go at it. And that's the best thing that I've learned, that through all of these points where my body was just breaking down, you know, and stop, don't, you can't go anymore, stop, you know, and you yeah. keep pushing through those barriers. That's what I tell people. I say, that's why I love the sport. I mean, you know, clearly it's the people I meet is hands down the best part. But, but what it has done for my mindset to overcome like normal everyday challenges that would hurt or plague me before. Now it's like, this is nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, that's the best thing I've learned to this is just when you push through those barriers and those walls, man, you become like a freaking bullet. And I love it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can you describe how the feeling kind of when you complete some type of marathon swimming or running or otherwise how does that feel for you uh, yeah i mean it's it's definitely a euphoric moment i will say for for those of you who have not participated in long run, long distance running before um the runner's high is definitely the most powerful thing i've ever felt between doing long distance cycling swimming and running so the runner's high is definitely real um how do I feel, man? I, I just, you know, I have such a range of emotions I go through when I do some of these things. And it's just, uh, you know, I think, I think one nice thing I like about running is, is that you're able to, you're able to talk to people. Right. So for example, like I, I did a hundred, uh, my last hundred mile, I ran with this guy who was an anesthesiologist up at Cedar sinai And it was funny. I ran like probably 70 miles of the race with him, you know, and then here's me. I'm just like, this guy's probably like, Oh my God, this guy just doesn't stop talking to me. Um, but the fun, the cool part about it was after he made a joke, he's like, dude, he's like, you know more about me than my wife does. You know? <laughs> and, and, and I think that's the cool part about like ultra running. Why I love it is that you can actually like talk to people out there. People. Yeah. Um, you know, I, but again, swimming is always where my heart will be. Um, it's just like when I look back and I'm like, I got my earplugs in and yeah. freezing my butt off. And I got my cap on. <laughs> right. It doesn't fit on my head because my head's too damn big. And you know, it's, um, it's a little, little different of a sport. And so swimmers are definitely much more, I would say, in their mind than a cyclist or a runner because you don't have that ability to, like, communicate while you're in the water as much, clearly, unless you stop for a feeding or something. But with a runner, I mean, it's like you can constantly – you can theoretically constantly talk during a 100-mile race. You know, I mean, it's – you're not pushing yourself um, – to that crazy mm-hmm. point where you can't talk to somebody like you would if you're running like a 5k or something like that so um no the feeling i get is is definitely a, just just that feeling of adventure of, of of completing it um just breaking through those barriers and 
to me, I'm, I'm always, I'm always smiling. It's kind of my thing, you know, and I never understood these people. I I'd hear these stories about runners or swimmers that we'll be like beating up on their crew or something. I'm like, what the heck? What, what, are you kidding me right now? You know? Um, I think it's just, uh, to me, it's humorous to me. Cause I'm like, you know what, we're out here doing this stuff. Like just smile through the pain, get through it. You know, it sucks, but you signed up for it. Deal with it. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just the way I, that's the way I roll. So. Yeah. Is there anything you haven't finished that you've set out to do? Uh, the one, so the one, uh, I did this, I did this challenge back in 2015 to raise money for St. Jude's, um, and it was a, it was this random challenge I came across and it was called a uh, sub three challenge. And it was trying to, there was, there was this communication out there I read where people were trying to do like a sub three hour marathon run. And then over the same weekend, or maybe a day later, you do a sub three hour, uh, a 10 K swim. And so I came up with this deal. I'm like, you know what the heck with this? I'm like, I'm just going to do them back to back. Let's see if we can knock this out. Well, I made the, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say rookie because I wasn't a rookie, a rookie mistake, but I, I didn't take, I don't know how, because um, we had like three experienced endurance athletes that were helping me that day. Um, but we didn't take water with us when we went out on the run course and all I had was like product. So I'm at, by the end of the run, I'm just like sucking down, like, I forget what I was drinking, like Carbo or uh, Carbo Pro and Electrolyte or something. I forget what I was drinking, but I, I just became like, I, all I wanted was like water, you know? And uh, so I, I got kind of sick right toward the end of my run. So I got the run done and then I'm like walking toward the beach and my body's just cramping up because I, I was not drinking as much toward the end. And it was mm -hmm. super hot that day, of course, in Pennsylvania up in Prescott along Lake Erie. And, uh, and, and I just, I didn't have my drink with me and I got in the water and it was literally like just instant cripple. I was like, <laughs> you know, oh, and, and I like got and I was cramped. My entire body was like cramped. So I got out of the water and my one buddy was like trying to like stretch me out. They had water and I'm like slugging this water and I get back into Lake Erie and I start swimming. I'm literally like a whale in the water. I'm like, I'm like drinking the freaking Lake Erie water. I'm like just wanting, I'm so dehydrated. Um, and that was the one thing I didn't finish. I, I think I made it like four miles that day. My right arm was like completely locked up. My, I was literally like swimming with one arm and realized I wasn't going to beat three hours. And I was like, God, okay, well, I guess we're done. So that was like the one, that was like the only thing in my life that I had, um, I started, but I didn't finish. So it was, um, uh, but like overcoming that, like it didn't, it didn't break me, you know? I, and I give all the credit in the world to the people that, um, have done swims and then have, have, um, and I don't want to call it failed. It's not failed. It's just mother nature or whatever, something else happened. Right. And you couldn't get it done. Mm -hmm. And I just give all the credit to people that go back and just keep trying. I mean, that's like, dude, that's so badass. And I mean, my one good friend, Pat, uh, Gallant, Charette, uh, I'm sure I just butchered her name, but I'm sure we're all familiar with her. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, she's gone back to a couple of these swims and just gone after them. And I'm like, man, I, I can't imagine going back you know, and, and continue to try to do some of these swims. Like when I was in Japan with Stephen Redmond, I mean, love that guy. Just a stalwart brood of a man. So total, total big, big huggy bear, you know. But I mean, he just went after that Suguru channel a couple times. And it's just like, wow. I'm like, I, to me, that, that, that's, I, I love that. Like people have such perseverance. I mean, Pat, I remember the day after, like we swam the North Channel. She, she, I think it was due to hypothermia. She got pulled like a quarter mile from the Scottish. And we started that day. We, it was the first time in history. It was super cool that two people were swimming in the North Channel at the same time. Oh, wow. And uh, so we went out and started going at it together. And, uh, and I remember like coming back and then I heard that she, she got pulled. And the next morning she comes down the steps and she's like, how you doing today? How's your day? You know? And I'm like, Oh my God, you're a total rock star. You know, like, like yeah. you just, you just like, boom, snapped out of it. And like, you're ready for that next challenge. And I, mm -hmm. I love that. Like people like that are so inspiring to me. Do you think there's that you're try, still trying to find the thing that you kind of have to go back to? Uh, well, I definitely see, see with marathon swimming, like I say now is to say like, okay, you've, I've done a bunch of like the New York swims and, you know, red river and, 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 and Tampa Bay and then the ocean seven. And so it's kind of like, all right, what's, what's in my mindset, how I do is I, I have to set the bar higher, you know? So to me, it's like going after, there are some of the ocean seven, I would say one or two of them in particular, I'm looking at, I'd love to do a double of um, something that's never been done before, you know, at some point um, there are some point to point swims and you know, I should say one, 
in Hawaii that's never been done before. The Kiowaho, I mean, you know, Penny's gone after John. A couple other, one or two other guys have gone after one other guy. Um, but big, big swims like that, I've, I've planned out, I've mapped out, and now it's just a matter of executing on it. Um, but I would love to, I would love to go after something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, there's definitely some more that I'd love to do out there. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, when. I got a couple right. of like, chats here. I'm, I'm sorry if people are leaving. That's okay. That's okay. all right. I think they're kind of. Um, we'll come back to some of those. I want to okay, know. Cool. Um, tell me, uh, tell me about a swim that you're the most proud of. Uh, probably, probably, probably. Well, I'll just simply say the the toughest day of my life was July 10th, uh, 2012, and that was during the uh, Suguru Channel. So that one, you know, the funny thing is people are saying like, oh, which one's the hardest? I'm like, well, I'm like, theoretically, when I first started swimming the Ocean 7, I, I kind of assumed that the North Channel would be the hardest, just based off of like, at that time, 10 years ago, everybody, you know, that was like, I forget who it was, uh, called it the mile for mile, like the hardest swim in the world, you know what I mean? And so I just assumed, okay, that sounds like that one's pretty hard. Let's put that one last, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, but, but the funny thing is every, everybody I've talked to that's done the seven has ranked them like different ways. So it's, mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the conditions and everything, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every Kevin swim's different. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. I, ha I had a vision of him in my head and I couldn't think, and, and his name was completely eluding me. So yes, Kevin. <laughs> um, but uh, the one I was most proud of was Suguru Channel, and that was mainly because we just – we went out that day, and that was still in 2011, so there was still not a lot – 2012. There was not a lot known about that body of water. Um, one of my – one of the greatest people I know is Steve Minotones, and he – I mean, that guy helped me – I mean, he saved my life that day for the most part, you know, because he spoke Japanese. He was on the boat. He was there. Uh, Stephen Redman and I were there together. Stephen had completed his Ocean 7. And, um, you know, we got on the swim that day and it was just like, I mean, you watch the video, it's pretty gnarly, <laughs> you know, to say the least. Like we started out and I'm like, I'm seeing like Steven not having a chance to go like a couple times. I'm seeing these other swimmers. And at that point, like there was just nothing out there. Like I had no clue how to even sign up for the uh, Suguru channel, you know. And uh, we got there and started having to go at it. I mean, it was like. I mean, the waves were just I call it sandpaper chop. They were just like hitting you from every direction you know and i jumped and i jumped off the boat that day and i remember them saying like oh just go in and like touch the rock and go you're fine like it's super rough you're in inside the land barrier or whatever and i'm like you know and in my head i'm like no nope, screw that i'm like somebody's gonna be like oh you didn't get out you know so i uh um i jumped off that day and i swam in i climbed out on this rock and and it was a very bad idea because within about five seconds i slipped and fell my like oh. whole forearm and both my shins were just like bleeding bad oh, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to embellish it. It was not a pretty sight. And then all of a sudden I'm looking out over this dark ocean, right? And I'm seeing my two boats and then, I'm, then, then my brother's like, be careful. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and, um, but we went, we started that day and I, you know, I expected it to be, I don't know, seven, eight hours swim, something like that. And after about eight hours, I look up and I'm like nowhere near Hokkaido, you know, and I'm like, oh damn. So, but, but, and I just keep swimming. And, and again, the waves was crushing me from all over. And uh, after like nine, 10 hours, I look up and I'm like, how far am I? They're like five miles. And then it was like every hour they just kept telling me like five miles. So basically I was just like trying to swim that way and I'm going this way and there's nothing mm -hmm. I can do about it. And um, so I just kept plowing away and it was like hour after hour, you know, just knowing I was pretty much not going anywhere. And uh, just, just mentally how you process that, um, would would be why I would say how why I was proud of myself because it's like yeah. you just, I, I had the mindset going like you have to you have to really twist things in your head you know uh, when you have to get through something and to me I was like I, it almost became like a mantra in my head where I'm like they just they're just the Japanese coast guards can get dark out they're gonna pull me out of this water and I'm like I'm not getting out of this water they're gonna have to come find me you know like I just had this like mantra where I'm like I'm not getting out of this damn water you know and uh so I just kept going like hour after hour and I remember kept getting colder I'm like oh god then it's dark out and then I'm like running into fishing nets and you know it was just like and then my tongue was all swollen it was just a rough day you know but we finished got to Hokkaido it was like 15 hours and 55 minutes so it was like twice what I was expecting it to be wow so yeah. that to me was that was to overcome that hour over hour was why I'm 
I was most proud of that one. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's a big part of it for a lot of people. Do you have yeah. any recommendations or anything for anyone who's kind of faced in that same kind of situation? I like how you describe it as like, you know, the mind, like, because you're so totally circling, kind of oh, you yeah. be circling yeah. the drain. So yeah. like, how would you describe how people, how, to rec how would you recommend people get through those situations? Yep, yep. How would you recommend? Oh, how do you know? I mean, well, <laughs> well, to me, people always say, like, what do you think about, right? So, so a big piece in, like, what I'm writing my book on and stuff is it's called The Third Boat. So to me, you have, you have to find that hero in your life I talked about, right? And how you develop that mindset to push through all those barriers for me personally. Um, I've had this visualization. I'm huge on visualization. I'm all about that. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm swimming, when I get to that dark point, I look over and I have my boat, right? So I have my boat, that my escort boat. I have maybe my kayaker. And then I have the boat that nobody sees. And to me, that's my, that's my third boat. And the third boat is where my grandparents are, right? My friend Summer, who was taken from me, my buddy Jimmy, um, you know, and my cousin Kara. And uh, <clears throat> three people I lost my age in a very short period of time in their mid 2000s. That was very difficult. And uh, I have them on the boat, right? And I'm swimming and I'm just in that real crap spot. And I look over and it's like seeing my grandparents like tell me to keep going. And it's mm -hmm. like, I'm just like, mm, start crying. Yeah. Just, <laughs> like right now, like the hair is standing up and I'm just yeah. like, oh, you know, and it's like, nah, there's nothing stopping me at that point because. You know, thinking about the stories of the families at the hospital, these mothers who had lost their children. And I'm just like, nah, yeah. this, this isn't hard. This is easy. You know what I mean? This is the easiest thing you can do right now. You know, so um, compared to what everybody else has gone through. So I'm like, you know what? Shut up. You know, say a couple other things to myself and, uh, <laughs> you know, you just keep going forward. And, um, yeah. and I utilize that visual on, you know, the trail too. I'll visualize my, you know, grandparents riding a bike in front of me or something <laughs> like that, you know, and it's... Um, that's how I've gotten through what I've gotten through a lot of those, a lot of those different challenges and, and we'll continue to utilize because it's the best yeah. thing, you know, so how, how, that's how I get through it. Um, I, and I know we've all been to that, you know, like dark place in some of these swims and you know, how you get through that is, is definitely whether you're going to be successful or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen people quit in ways that it's like, no, you know, there's, there's no way that, you should be quitting right now, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just the mind, it's the mind just, you know, like, Oh, I'm cold. I'm like, I want to be like, you're not cold. Like, shut up. Go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I, I've seen that, that breaking, that breaking yeah. point many times with people. And um, so I don't know, that's my mantra. That's how I get through it. So. I appreciate that. Sorry for your losses. Thank you very much for sharing. No, yeah, no, it's, it's all good. They're with me every day. So we're yeah. Good. Yeah. That's awesome to have that. <laughs> um, how's the pandemic been for you? Uh, being quarantined out here, you know, um, you know, in my backyard, I got 11,000 foot peak, you know, so to me, you know, the pool has been closed. They got a 50 meter pool, like a hundred yards from here, which is amazing. I've never had like a, a pool that close. So like, it's great for when there wasn't a pandemic to swim, but now that there is, I mean, clearly my swimming is, I recommend people to that are frustrated and I have, I've lost three races this year that I would have loved, including my own. Um, that I would love to have been directing and, and, and running. But, you know, the reality is we just have to, we have to put everything in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place and say like, you know, Hey, we're, we're lucky to be here. We're lucky to be alive. We're lucky to pursue these sports. We're lucky to have the friends that we do, you know, uh, to, to Mark's point, you know, friendship knows no distance or no barriers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that kind of stuff. Right. So like in days like today where I get to meet so many new people and talk and you guys can all think I'm crazy and I love it. Um, but, um, you know, it, go out and find your own adventure. You don't have to swim or run a race to, um, you know, to, 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 uh, I feel, feel fulfilled. Right. I mean, you can go out and find just like point to point, you know, like I'll go out on the Pacific Crest Trail and be like, all right, I'm going to run from here to here today. You know? And I'm like, oh, I'm upset that my hundred K got canceled. Like, oh, well, I'll go run 100K from here to here, you know, mm -hmm. or I'll just go run up to Idlewild from here. I'll go run to, you know, I'll go for a swim around Coronado Island. I don't know. I'll go pick one of my buddies up and we'll go find some lake up in the mountains. It's freezing cold and I'm just going to go out and have a go at it, you know. Yeah. I think that's where the spirit of adventure comes in, mm -hmm. um, to go out and find your own swim, find your own run, right? Don't rely on other people to necessarily give that to you. Mm -hmm. And I think now is just that perfect time. And, and, and one of the most fulfilling things I have is to not swim or run, but to crew for people um, and, and, and direct my own race. 
So, hey, you know what? If you've ever thought about that, now's a great time to do that. Like, start planning a new race. You know what I mean? I mean, so many of you swim in such amazing places. Um, you know, and, and never in a million years would, would Pittsburgh have ever been a place that people would have done open water swimming. You know what I mean? No. They look at me like I got three heads. Like, it's like, <laughs> like beer and football. Woo! You know? Um, so, like, being an open water swimmer in Pittsburgh is like, you know, totally different. But, like, yeah. I was after I swam in the rivers, I'm like, man, this would be a great swim, you know? And then yeah. over the years, I mean, my God, the people that have come and done the swim and, and I've met and, and just loved Pittsburgh, I'm like, that's why I do it, you know? Exactly. Um, so get out there and, like, I don't know, if, you can, if somebody's doing a swim, crew for them, you know? So if you, and if you've never done that before, you know? Um, or plan your own race, you know? Uh, start small. Just do grassroots, you know? Just five people one year, ten people the next. Like, take your time with it. Don't get crazy and try to blow it up and make it huge. It doesn't have to be that way. I mean, most people never even heard of the Three Rivers Swim from the long, for the longest time, you know? And I'm like, the city probably still doesn't even know what happens. And, and, and I'm kind of cool with that. You know, yeah. I'm not really after like all the glamor and the, you know, big corporate sponsors and stuff. I'm like, no, nah, yeah. just kind of like, you know, talk to the river rescue, talk to the chief and he thinks we're all nuts, but you know, he embraces it. And you know, there's no permitting and all this stuff. I'm like, we just go out there and we have a swim and you know, we've done it for six, seven years in a row and it's came out perfect, you know, and it's, I like it that way. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, for those of you who come and do it, like your, your award is a spike, a railroad spike, you know, what I mean? <laughs> nice. it's like Pittsburgh painted on, you know, like, you know, it, it's not glamorous, but you know what? It is what it is. You might smell a little funk in the water once in a while. And you might, <laughs> oh, well, you know, yeah. after you swam around Manhattan or you drank a gallon of diesel fuel in Japan, I'm like, you know what? I can, <laughs> people are resilient. We can survive anything. We're okay. Right. Right. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I, we are running out of time. My oh, little guy is here to say hi. I know. I want to talk to you all day. Um, I what? Let's see. So one What's of the up, questions buddy? was, <laughs> "What's up, man?" He's waving at you. I like your hair. It's nice. What do you think? What's your name? <laughs> like he's like normally people don't talk to me on this thing. Oh, it's <laughs> you have the headphones in. <laughs> Um, so are you going to continue to do the three river marathon swim from? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, it did, you know, I decided to put a kibosh on it this year, I think for safety reasons, which yeah. everybody responded and they're very cool with. Um, but yeah, no, it's something that even if I'm out here on the West coast, you know, I'm, I'm still going to do every single year. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm proud Pittsburgher, proud ambassador to our city. I love it, you know, and it's only going to get bigger and stronger. And I, yeah. you know, there's a lot, there's a lot more that I want to do for it. Yeah. Um, the last couple of years have, been challenging in my life but after that it's kind of like all right we're gonna this swim's gonna be something super fun and, and it's it already is i mean there's no i'm not gonna tr I'm not trying to downplay it but um, right. there's a lot a couple other things i want to do to make it even you know stronger and more fun to be there so i'm pretty excited about it awesome um and then we'll do this as the last question what marathon swimmer have you looked up to it since kind of inspired so, i was thinking about this last night when i was going for my run if you're going to ask this question i am going to have to put i am i'm going to have to give my top five in no particular order yes, absolutely. And that's and, that, and that's mainly because like any of these people i could say could be my number one but i i can't do it so 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 um you got gracie vanderbly you got uh sarah thomas you got uh craig lenning uh, Jamie Patrick and Stephen Munitons. And, and they're five people that some of them were, have helped me through, um, you know, challenging swims. Um, you know, if there's one person in this world I would want to be stuck in a really crap situation with, it'd be Craig Lenning. That guy is just a total rock star. Um, Sarah for her tenacity, as we all know, Sarah and love Sarah and Gracie for her kindness, her and her husband, Neil are just amazing, wonderful people that I've come to know and are great friends with. So, and Steve, you know, and, and Jamie, Jamie, same thing, just super happy, fun, loving guy. Just spent the weekend in Alaska with him, having a great time. I mean, so those people, I look back and the swims that they have done and they've completed and the kindness and the, what I've learned from them over the years um, is just like second to none. So, you know, any of those people could be my top, top person. It's just, you know, I couldn't, uh, I, I had to give, I had to give it a top to lot. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't just be like, oh, this is my favorite because everyone <laughs> Oh, I appreciate that a lot. I really appreciate your time today too. Thank you. So Absolutely, much. no problem. Anytime. I uh, I love these things. These Zoom meetings are seriously awesome. And uh, you know, when I get invited to do one, I'm all, all for it. Although although this one is hands down the earliest for me. I will say. <laughs> I, I'm like my. Like, oh God, I gotta wake up. I'm like, ah, you know, so. <laughs>
Thank but, you for waking up early for us. We oh, appreciate no, it. No, no, it's all good. I, I normally get up early. I just, I laugh because I had a good run last night. So when I woke up, I was a little creaky this morning. So. Yeah. And if you keep going on the Pacific Crest Trail, you come right through Ashland. And I know. I was going to say, that's so going to go right up your way. I know. Yeah. Ah, someday. I, I, I think the, uh, the speed record, maybe it's someday. We'll see. We'll go for it. <laughs> I mean, it's a little it. couple thousand mile journey. What the hell? You know? So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Darren. No, I really all good. It. All good. Anybody has any questions, wants to reach out, please. This is this is who I am. I love helping people. So if you ever have a question on any swims, anything I can do for you, um, please let me know. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, you guys. See you later. Take care, Bye. guys. Woo!